Welcome to the simple truth. The last program we talked about praise and and uh, just simple let's praise and and today I'm going to take a, a story out of the Old Testament, Second Chronicles uh, chapter twenty. Uh, so get your Bibles out, head that direction, and find it. It's in the Old Testament. Um, after uh, you go into First and Second Samuel. First and Second Kings, and then First and Second Chronicles. We're in Second Chronicles, chapter twenty. Today, though, I'm going to go into more of an idea of of how we should approach uh, praise, how to receive uh, God's answer, and, and to put us where we should be doing in the in the getting into the right mindset of it. Okay, um, and here we have the story of. Um, Jehoshaphat, and there's uh, three or more armies that are going to come against Jerusalem, and he's just been told about it in verse 2, um, saying that a great multitude is coming against you from beyond, uh, and uh, Hazon, uh, Ab Tamar, uh, please forgive me for that, I'm terrible with these names, uh, but Jehoshaphat, he, he, fear came on him because he didn't know what to do because of these, this great army of, of several nations that was coming against uh, Israel. And so look at the first thing he did. The first thing in verse 3 was uh, Jehoshaphat feared. There's a reason for that. It's a reason because he sees the situation now and that it's beyond his control and it's beyond anything he can do about it. Uh, so the first thing he does is he set himself to seek the Lord. We need to be in that attitude. The first thing is seek after the Lord. And not only in, in times of trials. We should be seeking after him on a full-time basis uh, to what he wants us to do next and to, to maybe uh, warn us of situations coming or to prepare us for situations coming. But the first thing that we need to be in an attitude to seek the Lord. Okay. The next thing is to proclaim a fast throughout all Judea. He proclaimed a fast. Okay. Okay. Um, there's, there's an area that, that we don't see much of in the church today. Very few people, I would say, in the church even uh, has a, an inkling of what fasting is about, other than it's not to take any food. Well, there's many, many aspects of that. Uh, and time limits and, and what you fast and those kind of things. And in another program, I want to talk about fasting. But right now, I want you to understand that, that here the king, seeing the situation he couldn't do anything about, he couldn't control, First he went into seeking the Lord, and then he went into a fast. He proclaimed a fast. Uh, so verse 4 uh, so Judea uh, gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of, of Judah that they came to seek the Lord. Okay, so here he's not only is he seeking the Lord and proclaiming a fast, but he, now he's calling on Judea itself, the countryside. Um, and how I relate that to you and I is... is those people around us that are close to us, that are that are uh, either part of our church or, or of a, a group that, that we are close to, as, as in a small group, uh, to uh, you know say this is the situation, uh, this is what I want prayed about. Uh, I want us all to seek after the Lord to get His direction, and that we proclaim a fast and and then set. What you what you feel like the Lord is, and and I should mention right now that we when we seek the Lord we should seek what He wants us to fast and the length of time, and and all that about that uh, we need to do it in His direction, um, how He wants it done, so that we will get the results that God wants. Uh, so here He's calling out in help from the people to to gain strength by a cooperation. Uh, in the New Testament, we look at uh, Acts, 
And we find they're in the upper room and they're all in one accord. Well, that's the same idea that's happening here is everyone gets into the seeking the Lord and in one accord in their prayer so that they can get an answer of what God wants to be done. I want you to understand fasting is not to manipulate God to do what you want him to do. It is to mainly say that I am serious about this prayer. I'm serious about wanting to know your uh, guidance in this and that you come up with the answer to help us in this situation. Not necessarily how I'd like to have it done, okay? So we're not trying to manipulate God. We're trying to uh, impress how much we need him, okay? Uh, and then uh, verse 6. No, well, about verse 5. And then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hands is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Uh, here... Here he's coming into, here's the question he's asking God, you know. Um, aren't you God? Aren't you over all the kingdoms of the, of the world? Uh, uh, aren't you the one that has the power in your hands to do something about this? Uh, uh, aren't you the one that, that can deliver us in this, in this time of trial? Uh, he's... he's and you can look at him one way where he's he's complaining, but he's not really. He's 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 reaffirming who God is. Uh, verse seven: Are you not our God who drove out inhabitants of the land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? Here again, he's he's bringing back in when we. Uh, talk about praise. We remember the things God has done, the great things He's already done, so that we can not only, uh, in a sense, reminding God that He knows about it, but it's reminding us and building our confidence in God, so that we can we can move doubt out of the way and bring in confidence of. Our great God that, that can. Our awesome God. Uh, verse 8. And they dwelled in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your namesake. If disaster becomes us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before the temple in your presence. For your name is in, the, in this temple and cry to you in our affliction and you will hear and save. Now look at it. He says, even if, you know, disaster comes. Even if everything that we don't want to happen, happens. Here we are, standing for your temple, calling out to you, crying to you in our affliction, it says. And here again, and you will hear and save. Again, affirming, you know, we're in this mess, but we want you to know that you're God and we're not. And we're going to praise you even if the worst comes on us. Because we know that you Hear our prayers. And we know that you are able. That's really what he's saying in this, in this verses that I just read you. Uh, verse 10. And now here are the people of uh, Amron, uh, Moab, and Mount Seir, uh, who you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us. By coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given to us to inheritance. You know, <laughs> these people 
got out of the way so that we could come into our inheritance that you gave us, Lord. Uh, this was yours that you gave to us. And now they've come to destroy us and kick us out of, of, of the possession that you gave us. Uh, and, and, and it's kind of like the idea of, Lord, this is how they're repaying your people for not going to battle against them when we came out of Egypt. Are you going to let this happen? And he, uh, he goes on and he said, um, verse 12, O our God, will you not judge them? For, they have, for we have no power against this multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Um, here again he's saying, you know, we don't have the power to defeat this on our own. I can't do it alone. You know, it, it's uh, uh, let go, let God mentality here. Uh, you can't do anything about it. You're not powerful to stand against this army. Uh, just like sometimes we're not powerful enough in ourselves to stand against a situation, uh, whether it is a situation or a disease or, or an attack of the enemy or whatever, uh, we're not able to have the power to, to overcome that, but you do. Now, the only way that you and I have power to overcome that is if we're seeking after the Lord. Because He gives us the power to overcome. He is the one that delivers us even through a situation, or, or deliver us from. Uh, we always want it to be from, but more times than not, it seems like it's, it's through a situation. And in, that, in doing that, we find that we gain uh, wisdom, we gain confidence that we can trust in Him for everything, no matter what it is. And here, uh, the king... Is putting it into perspective. We don't have the power to defeat this army. Uh, we don't have the wisdom how to do this. But you do, Lord. Show us the way. Show us your wisdom. And help us through this battle. Uh, verse 13. Now all Judah with... With their little ones, their wives, and their children stood before the Lord. In, the, in that verse, without it saying it, kind of reading between the lines here, uh, they're coming into unity, agreeing with what the king was praying. Understand these verses that I've just read to you was his prayer. He was making inter, you know, that intercession to the Lord of this is the situation... And we need you. And then in verse 13, I believe that, that it's, it's bringing out into us that this whole assembly of people, this, this congregation, stood in, in one accord with what the king was saying, with his prayer, and understanding that they, along with the king, needed a deliverance from God himself. Look at verse 14. And then, when they got into this one accord, as in Acts, uh, we read the, the 120 in the upper room came in one accord, and then there was a sound of a, a rushing wind, and uh, like a rushing wind, and then the uh, flames of fire touching on top of each one of them, you know, no matter who it was in that room, because they was in one accord. Everybody was the same. And this is the same thing I believe is happening here, is... It, they're in one accord. Uh, there's not one greater or lesser, but they were in, this, in agreement. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon um, this one man. Think of this whole congregation of people. But the Spirit of the Lord only said on this one man to give a prophecy. To hear from the Lord. In verse 15, he says... Listen, all of you of Judea, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King uh, Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, 
Do not be afraid nor dismay because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Now, in that verse, here the Lord has given us an, an, a start of an answer of this prophecy. Uh, he's, we've, we've sought after him. We've been in prayer. We proclaim a fast. So he knows that, that, that we are, are, are being sincere about it. And that we're not looking for him to do what we want him to do. But for him to do what his will is. Anytime that we are seeking God for only what I want. I'm in trouble. Because I'm not looking for his will. I'm looking for him to do my will. And we need to understand. God is God. You're not. So when we get in those kinds of troubles. First we need to seek after him. As we should be always. We need to be in prayer. As, as, as it, we've read in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5. Rejoice always and do not cease from prayer and fast. It's, it's almost like when you put those three together, you've, you've really put a, a, a power plant together so that God can work in and work through so that his will be done and not yours. How many times have we, we've heard uh, maybe a prophecy and we could think of a thousand ways God could do it and he'll come up with a thousand and one because his way is not our way. His understanding is above our understanding. We need to allow God to be God and let him do the things he wants to be done. Okay, so uh, he's answered them now. Praise God that he, that he answers us in prayer. If we'll listen. Prayer is a two-way street. Uh, we can pray, but we need to also be listening with that spiritual ear so that the Lord can speak to us in that time of prayer to let us know what the way and how we should be doing something. Uh, he tells them not to be afraid. The battle's not yours, but God's. How many times have we tried to fight the battle when it wasn't our battle to win or to fight? It was God's and we needed to let him be God. Uh, verse 16. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up from the ascents of uh, Zia and you will find them at the end of the brook uh, before the wilderness of Jeru. Uh You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. And do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground in all Judea, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Uh, and then... You see, after they got the answer, then they went into worship. It is important that once we receive that answer, though nothing has happened yet, we've only gotten a word uh, from the Lord on this, then we worship Him. And that includes praise. That includes singing. That includes, uh, as they did, bow down before him, uh, submitting to the Lord so that we become in, in a humble state before him. And verse 19, it talks about the Levites, uh, um, uh, how they stood up to praise God of Israel with voice uh, loud and high. Listen, I tell you, it, there's a time when you get a word from the Lord that he has answered you. Man, that's a time to start praising him in worship. Now, let it go. Uh, praising him. 
Uh, so verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out in the wilderness of uh, Tia. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Jerusalem, and you inhabitants of, of, uh, of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people... He appointed those who sang to the Lord and, and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now, what general <laughs> would send the praise team in the battle in front of the army? And yet, that's exactly what God wanted. That was the way God wanted it done. How many times would we look at that and think, how foolish. And yet, that's the way God wants to have it done. And it always, and I want you to know, always, even though it may look foolish to us, He may ask you to do something that you completely think is foolish, that you may even think is dumb. Do it anyway. Because God got away, and it's better to go with Him than not. Because when you go with Him, the results are going to be what He willed. Even though you didn't understand why you had to do it that way. I can tell you story after story of times when God had me do something, and I thought, oh my, <laughs> are you serious? And yet, I've seen people get healed because of doing something that is, in my own mind, I thought was completely foolish and, and had no idea how they would react. And yet, God healed. It is simply, there's a time when you forget about seeing and you just believe and follow after what he says. Here he says send out the praise team send them first, stand and watch what's going to happen uh, and then in verse 22 and then when they began to sing and to praise the Lord uh, the Lord set up ambushes against the people of Amron um, um, Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated How we think sometimes, what can praise do? It can defeat the enemy. It can put them to flight. It can change the whole atmosphere of the situation if we'll go into praise. So, so I'm going to give you a little guideline here. And, and I don't want to make it a, a fast set, this is a law type thing. But I want you to think about it. First of all, the king sought the Lord. That's what we, we really all should be doing first. Yeah, if, if I'm sick, I want to pray about it first and, and then go to the doctor. Uh, when I had knee replacement, I, I prayed about it, prayed about it, and prayed about it. And finally... God used a doctor to, to replace my knees and it has been such a, a blessing not only to me but to encourage other people that, that God uses doctors too and, and they've gotten a blessing out of it and so uh, be an encourager even though you may not understand what, what's going on the second thing is always be in prayer seek the Lord, be in prayer the third thing that we don't do much of and we should, and that is we should call fast. Proclaim a fast. Uh, for, you know, and, and again, I, I question, I put it this to you. Uh, pray about it that the Lord tells you how long and what that you're to fast. Uh, do it in His will, not your own. The fourth thing is praise. Continue to praise Him 
in the midst of that trial, in the midst of that difficulty, continue to praise him. And as you're praising him, the fifth thing is, watch for the answer. And be willing to receive. Seek the Lord. Continue to pray to the Lord. Proclaim a fast. Continue to praise Him. And then, when you receive, continue to worship Him with your praise and with your joy. And I want you to understand, sometimes it is you alone that needs to do these things. But it sets you in a place where God can answer, where God can take you to that place you need to be going, and that he can, he can show you his glory by having victory over whatever it is that's come into your life. But also, it's not wrong to have people of faith that you know are going to come into one accord with you and they will seek, they will pray, they will fast, they will praise, and they will be watching for you to receive that blessing that God has for you. Today, churches, these five things, and they don't have to always be in these orders, but these five things is something that we, the church, need to put into our worship. Not just because of trials that's coming at us, but just so that we can see His glory. So we can see the healings that He has for us. So that we can see the blessings that He has for us. Not only for ourselves, but for those around us. It is time for the church to stand up and bring revival the way God wants revival to come so that his hand can reach out farther, touch people, bring them into his kingdom, and show them his glory. And you and I, his hands and feet, should be about his business. Stay in praise. Stay in prayer. And look for the answers. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. scriptures show us that you and I are all related from one person. I'd like to read a scripture in Acts chapter 17, verse number 26. It said, and hath, speaking about God creating us, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell upon the face of the earth, and hath de determined the times beforehand and the bounds of their habitation." Notice we're all of one blood, and that means Adam. The scripture says that in Adam, all die. Remember we said that the life, the last time we met was in the blood? But it says in Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. The blood of Christ brings life. The blood of Adam brings death. In Adam, all die, but in Christ, all are made alive. You're more than just a friend. filter and a much needed laugh but on the toughest days when I'm not sure who to turn to you might just be a lifeline